Hey all, Steve from Guitar Niche here. Uh, this is a little tutorial on uh, reading neck relief. More importantly, um, what to avoid and how to uh, be a little bit more accurate in your end result. So this is it's going to be a little wonky to try to illustrate this so, so it's going to be more of an explainer but i have on the bench here uh, a 2017 uh, uh telly uh, fender american professional really nice instrument uh and i'm just in the, just about to do a uh a setup on it and i wanted to take the opportunity to explain something so uh my initial assessment went like this. I sighted down the neck from the headstock to the body on the treble side following this this corner here and then I did likewise on the bass side. So what that does is just gives me a visual you know to to uh, generalize the, the the condition of the neck and first thing I noticed was that treble side was nice and straight base side has a little bit of uh, relief extra relief relief in it according to what I saw so there's there's a caveat there because reading the edges of the neck is not the same as reading the neck itself from the playing surface that's those are two different things you got to keep that in mind so it's all a matter of of balance you know how you interpret these things you get your uh, your information your feedback from what you see, what you feel, what you measure, and then you take all that and you wrap it up in a bow and say this is the condition of things and this is the process to correct or um, you know get it to where it needs to be. Now having said that, I will say this. Um, there's too much relief in this neck at the moment, okay? And that will be adjusted out with my 1-8 drive here which uh, will fit down in here. In my, I know it's off, off uh, screen, but, uh, and this is a, a biflex uh, truss rod, I believe. So one point I wanna make here is to centralize or maximize your ability to get effective reading territory, to put a word or a term to it. In other words, stay away from here. Stay away from this end of the neck. Like within a, like a, a fret or two. Okay, I usually, you know, I'll go from the second fret, which is, to me, it's safe territory. Not here, here. This, this part of the neck tends to get a little thin, doesn't necessarily get uh, any real uh, influence from the truss rod. The, the majority of the, of the influence of the truss rod is going to be through the midpoint of the neck the, the mid middle of the span it, it now I'll temper that with a statement that it depends on the manufacturer it depends on the truss rod now up here typical telly slash fender construction bolt on neck this is um, this is prohibited territory this is area 51 if you would radioactive stay away from this why because because of the, the the nature of the build um this is a, a huge mass which has associated problems okay for one uh let's look at it like this the the neck on a on a on a typical electric guitar or any guitar i guess is is essentially it's a it's a stick attached to a plank this is a this is a hinge point and this is a point of distortion more, most importantly. So you want to stay away from uh, reading any distortion in this part of the neck and taking it as part of the condition of the whole neck. Yes, you have to, you have to understand it for what it is, if it is a problematic area, but you know, that's perhaps a different story or a different subject. But what I'm trying to say is avoid this part of the neck because it is inherently par problematic on uh, most electric instruments and and acoustics especially because again you have a stick 
attached to either a box or a plank. Two, it's it's just general physics. You can't you can't argue with with pressure. Of course, uh, you know uh, uh, better builders understand that, and they they, they have <clears throat> remedies for it baked in. But let's say this: our uh, our basic construction here. Now, um, in order to um, minimize the impact of this, we want to read the neck from here, say from the second fret for safety, to just where say it meets the body. So in, in an instance like this, we're looking at the 17th fret or so. On an acoustic, it might be the 14th, 15th fret, 12th, depending on the body, body style and size. But on, on instruments such as this, uh, any, any um, um, distortion or misreadability would come from here out, okay? Where, where the, literally where the, the bolts are attached. So I would say from here, okay? If I want to assess any problems up here, well, I'm going to leave that for, for a different subject because it starts to get a little, a little more detailed than I, I, I intend here. But anyway... The wonderful thing about uh, guitars is that any standard guitar, six string guitar, will have six beautiful straight edges on it. And these are wonderful tools. And from the first string on through to the sixth string, you can measure um, the amount of relief in the neck. I tend to go straight for the heart of the matter, which is the third and fourth strings being the, the, the midline. And particularly the, the third string, what I'll do is I will, um, again, uh, you know, hold down the string at the second fret and, uh, and this part of the neck. Keep in mind, I usually do this in a sitting position. I'm doing this uh, simply for the sake of illustration. And, and I may move up or down a fret down here and up a few frets or, or down a, fret, a few frets here. What I'm doing in that instance is I'm looking at how much relief changes as I move towards the extreme ends of the neck. That gives me an idea of how much influence the, the extreme ends of the neck are having on the overall uh, amount of relief. Keep in mind again, between here and here, the most affected parts by the truss rod itself are essentially between here and here and the eighth fret or so being the midpoint this area in general say from seven to nine eight being the the, uh, the median is going to be the best point to to get a very good idea of relief and how much it's going to move as you adjust it Having said that, I'm going to readjust my lighting a little bit here, and I'm going to have a real quick look. I will verbally explain what I'm seeing here at the moment. Be I'm seeing around, if I had to estimate it, I would say about uh, 15 or so thou here between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. Now, if I move out to the extreme ends, that all of a sudden, that changes to at least 20 plus thou, 22, 24, okay? So, it, it, it give you an idea, we're change, the, 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 the difference changes from what I perceive as the thickness of the G string on a standard set of strings to the thickness of a D string on a standard set of strings, just using general visual cues. So that's how much, just moving a few frets inward towards real adjusted space here, effective uh, truss rod activity is gonna uh, make a big difference, okay? So I want to see as little light here as possible. That is the gap at the eighth fret or so. I want to minimize that. So I'm going to give this a little, a little tweak. That's just fractional tweak. And this lovely biflex rod actually moved a little bit. 
Gotta say, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of the Biflex. No, too problematic. Too problematic. Anyway, that came down to, uh, I would have to say, less than 10 thou, about 8, 9, nine thou or so. Okay? And if I go to the extremes, that is about half of what I saw before. So I hope you're getting something out of this. The point is, the point, I'll come back to the core, core issue here. Uh, yes, you have to kind of consider what's going on on the extreme ends of the neck, but your effective, accurate reading is done away from the extreme ends of the neck. When it comes down to playing it, feeling it, you know, chucking out a few notes and a few chords and stuff like that, keep those extreme ends out of the mix. Rely on the this bloom through the 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 uh, uh, you know the 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 meat of the neck away from the extreme ends again. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, where this is going to wind up <clears throat> is whatever the instrument is going to allow. Uh, as I said, I, you know, we, we look at each string, each string is a, as a straight edge and we can assess. This is really, the first string is really quite straight. Sixth string, yeah, it's got a, a, a bit of extra air underneath there, which is great, by the way. A little tip in terms of um, tweaks or uh, odd things around the neck. The treble side, if it's nice and straight and you got a little bit more air under... The bass side, that's awesome because the thicker strings, they need more room anyway. This kind of thing, whether it's intentional or not, is actually an ideal situation. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, as far as uh, putting it into practice, uh, keep that in mind. The, again, the, the, the point of this uh, video is to um, use your measurements uh, where they are most effective and keep your readings accurate okay anyway i've said enough thanks for coming out play loud have fun read the descriptions there's lots of good stuff down below this video in the description notes tons of free stuff to give away have a great day cheers <laughs>